Good morning and welcome to day three of the Michigan County's virtual annual conference. I'm Derek Milo, Max Director of Communications and your moderator host for our first session of the day, which will be a workshop on transportation and infrastructure. The state has an expan expan excuse me, expansive and expensive and diverse network of transportation, automobiles, aviation, rail, biking, boating, public transportation, and on and on. Between state trunk lines, county roads, city roads, gas taxes, registration taxes, the MTF, the CTF, it can all get a bit confusing. This workshop will give you a refresher on the basic flow of tax dollars towards infrastructure and where we are going on infrastructure policy. Leading us through this review today will be William Hamilton, a senior analyst with the House Fiscal Agency, whose specialties include transportation funding. Before we get started, we will take questions at the end of the session. Please type your questions into the question field during Bill's presentation so that we can be sure to pose them in an efficient fashion at the end. We should finish in about one hour. The event is being recorded and will be posted to Matt's website at a later date. So with that, I welcome to the podium, William Hamilton of the House Fiscal Agency. Thank you, Derek. Good morning. I'm. Uh... I'm masked. I'm going to take off my mask, obviously, for the presentation, just so uh, I look a little like a better presenter. And uh, thank you. So again, my name is William Hamilton. I'm an analyst with the Michigan House Fiscal Agency, and we're a nonpartisan agency of the Michigan House of Representatives. So we assist the Michigan House of Representatives in their deliberations on the annual state budget. So the governor will present a budget each year. We analyze the budget for the House members. We identify alternatives, um, uh, explore the budget in detail, put the budget bills together. We also do analysis of uh, bills that affect statutes. So if you look at the Michigan legislature website and look at the bills, the, we do the bill analysis on the House side. So that's a, a very brief description of what we do. I'm going to be talking about transportation funding in Michigan. And I'm going to, we're going to, I've got a PowerPoint presentation. We're going to walk through that and we're using the current year transportation budget as a key to understanding transportation funding. So with some budgets, like the higher education budget, we can look at that budget and that budget will tell us a lot about state priorities with respect to higher education, how much the universities are getting in, in funding from the state of Michigan. S some budgets have that character. You can look at the budget and the budget effectively reflects the funding. Transportation is a little different. The budget, in this case, budget, the budget represents spending authority. It's, it's the Michigan legislature granting authority to the executive branch to, uh, to spend money on transportation. But the transportation budget, the figures represent estimates. So the actual distribution of funding could well, it, it, in fact, it will be different than what we appropriate in the budget. So again, to start with, we're gonna use the budget as a key to understanding funding. Uh, I'm using a document, you can see on the bottom, right of the document. It's a fiscal briefing dated January 2020. That now seems like a million years ago. It feels like 1920. Um, I should put January 2020 BC before COVID because in, in March of this year, so much changed um, because of this pandemic. And I'm reminded of a quote from Harold Macmillan, a former, former British prime minister. Somebody asked him what determined the course of his government. And he said, events, my dear boy, events. So events have, are, are totally driving the current conversation. But here we're going to look back at transportation funding. The current year budget, uh, we're going to jump in the Wayback Machine and look at January 2020. So let me make sure I can advance my slides. There we go. So we're going to. Uh, we're going, to, we're going to talk about funding sources, appropriation areas, 
and the, the different revenue sources that feed into this budget. Oh, I should also say this briefing is available on the House Fiscal Agency website. So you go to the website and look at the transportation documents. This will be here. So, um, so a couple of things about the budget. It supports state and local road and bridge programs, including the construction and preservation program on the state trunk line highway system. It supports funding for the local road system, county road commissions, cities and villages. It supports public transportation programs, prim primarily uh, transit programs of, of public transit systems and aeronautics programs. And it also supports administration of the Michigan Department of Transportation. I'm gonna skip over a couple of kind of, oops, well, I'll, I'll stop here. So this is a, a snapshot of the enacted budget as of January 2020. Since then, there have been adjustments to this budget, uh, supplemental appropriations that have included some of this additional federal money to the state of Michigan that, from the CARES Act. But this is a snapshot of, as of January 2020. And so one, one figure to keep in mind, the top figure represents gross appropriations in the budget bill. And it is $5,021,408,000. So in our fiscal world, we round up. In this case, we'll round up to 100 millions. So in our discussions going forward, we're gonna talk about this as a five, point, a five billion dollar budget. $5 billion. So how much is $5 billion? Most of us can't really put our minds around $5 billion. Um, it's too abstract. I, I think Bill Gates doesn't know what a billion dollars is. I think Bill Gates is as happy to find $20 in his coat pocket as you and I are, because that seems like real money. Um, just to, one way to put a billion, billions in perspective, before COVID, do you know how much the state of Michigan spent gambling, which is kind of a weird figure to think about. We spent $4 billion gambling at Detroit casinos, uh, Indian casinos, um, the state lottery. Um, so it's kind of a weird uh, touchstone for how much we've got in this budget, $5 billion. Jump ahead. So this is, uh, this is a pie chart, obviously of the fund sources, the revenue used to support the current year budget. So you can see on the bottom left, the biggest slice of that is state restricted funds. So state restricted funds are funds that you'll see in budget bills that are restricted either in the constitution or by statute for a particular purpose. The other big slice of this on the top right, federal funds. So the federal government makes funds available to state government for, in this case, transportation programs. Uh, I've got a paper on the agency website that talks about federal funds in the budget. And then we've got a couple, like a small slice of local and private funds and general fund. One thing I, I'll stop here and mention about local funds. The local funds we show in the budget represent funds provided by local units of government primarily as matching funds for, for certain projects. It does not represent all the funds collected by local units of government uh, on, your, on your own systems. You've got their county, countywide transportation taxes, millages, townships for, provide money. So this tiny slice here in the budget simply represents local funds returned to MDOT as matching funds. The next slide shows the transportation share of the total state budget. The transportation budget is about 9% of the total $58.5 billion state budget. Again, that was as of January, 2020. And the next slide is transportation share of the state general fund budget. So of the total state budget, 10.4 billion is state general fund revenue. And that's the, 
the part of the state budget that legislators, appropriators, really have more discretion over. Um, so in the past couple of years, we've used more general fund in the transportation budget than we used to. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But, but general fund is um, a significant part of state budgeting. General fund is the pool of money, for example, that provides um, local revenue sharing money. So we're gonna jump ahead. So this is a, a, a bar chart, obviously, that shows history of transportation appropriations. And I won't spend much time on it. Uh, I, and I don't know how it shows up on your screen, how big the figures are, but the large dark area on the bottom, state restricted funds, the green area, uh, federal funds. And you see a kind of a big jump in 2009 that was additional federal money provided by the federal stimulus program to the state of Michigan and to all states. So in 2009, a big jump in federal funds. And so this budget, there are three primary, uh, primary budget areas within this budget, excuse me, three primary program areas. The first is we talked about state and local road and bridge programs. The second, public transportation programs. And the third, aeronautics programs. So again, um, convert the budget converted to a pie chart. So the big dark area of this pie chart, um, road and bridge programs. It's about $4.4 billion. The other larger slice on the right, public transportation programs, 451 million and aeronautics programs. And then a couple, the small slice, a couple of one-time projects that were in the current year budget. And then the next slide is the previous slide sliced up into more detail. I, I won't dwell on this much. Um, I will just point out one thing, well, actually a couple things. So of the road and bridge programs, there are two or three major components of that. The biggest slice in the bottom left is the contribution this budget makes to local road and bridge programs. Your county road commission and the cities and villages within your county. That's the big blue slice of that pie. The other big slice at the top is the state trunk line road and bridge capital construction program, like the summer uh, orange barrel program, you might think about it. And then the other slice to the right of that is the state maintenance program of state trunk line highways. And one other thing I'll point out on this, um, let me look, there's uh, one slice of the pie if you look closely, debt service. The Michigan Department of Transportation over the years has sell, sold debt uh, bonds in support of their program. And the debt service in the current year is $213.9 million. So again, we have a paper on the HFA website that talks about MDOT's bond program. And that's, that's been a subject of great interest this spring in, in, in the governor's budget. Moving ahead, budget topics. Oh, so this is a organization chart of MDOT. We're not gonna stop at that. You can look at that. It's undoubtedly find an updated version of that on that. MDOT website. Um, let's talk about transportation revenue. Here we go. Um, so again, this is uh, another, another chart showing appropriations, going back a little further than the, the bar chart I showed earlier. This is, a, what do you call this, an area chart? And you can see the relationships between the um, restricted funds in the bottom and the federal funds, the green area on the top. Again, look at 2009, the big spike from additional federal money, the stimulus money. And you see revenue begin to, to move up. Uh, oh, in about 20, what is it, 2017. And that is from the road funding package that was passed in the Michigan legislature. So additional revenue coming in there. So there's a, obviously an increase in appropriated revenue. Um, another pie chart. This shows the major components of state restricted revenue. Not the federal half, but this is the state restricted 
restricted revenue as reflected in the budget. And you can see the biggest slice here comes from vehicle registration taxes. The other big slice up at the top, motor, uh, the gasoline share of the motor fuel tax. Um, down at the bottom, uh, diesel fuel taxes. And another slice that never used to be here, this is a new component of transportation funding. Uh, part of the road funding package passed by the legislature a couple of years ago, I think in 2015, was an earmarking of certain income tax revenue that would normally have fallen to the state general fund. So in the current year budget, that's $468 million. Um, again, that would normally be general fund revenue. It's not constitutionally dedicated to transportation in the way that the gasoline tax and the um, vehicle registration taxes are. So again, uh, Here's a narrative description of these taxes, the motor fuel tax. 20, the, the current tax on both gasoline and diesel is 26.3 cents a gallon. Um, there are, as we talked about registration taxes, when you, when you get a license plate for the car and you pay the registration tax, a typical car, it's now at least about $150, $200 on a, um, like a brand new, uh, and in most of your vehicles, the tax is based on the value of the vehicle. So if you have a $30,000 vehicle, the initial tax is about $180. Um, we focus so much on motor fuel taxes, on the gas tax. When people appear on off the record, uh, political leaders, Tim Skubik will ask them, are you going to increase the, the gas tax? But we should keep in mind the registration tax has, in the, certainly the last few years, been the biggest contributor to state registration taxes. I mean, excuse me, to state transportation taxes. Uh, the next slide talks about federal revenue. As noted, the federal government makes funds available to states. There's a, a publication on the agency website. And then, um, so I've worked at the fiscal agency 20 years. Most of the time there, I could have ended the, this presentation talking about restricted funds, uh, fuel taxes, registration taxes, and federal funds. But for the last uh, several years, the Michigan legislature has been appropriating state general fund dollars for transportation. Uh, again, transportation used to be funded exclusively with restricted funds, um, never using general funds. Um, but through, and my notes are through 2019, from 2012 through 2019, the state legislature, with the acceptance of the, the governors during that period, have appropriated $1.8 billion of general fund revenue. And again, that's the pool of money that provides for all of the operations of state government. That's the discretionary pot of money. It's effectively the pot of money that provides for local revenue sharing. Um, the next slide talks about some other kind of miscellaneous sources of revenue. I'll skip over that. We've talked about like the big picture of appropriations. We've talked about the revenue sources. Let's talk about the major programs funded from, from this budget. And again, the biggest slice are road and bridge programs. And there are two main uh, sub-programs, you might say. The state trunk line road and bridge program and the local road and bridge program. So we talk about this, and uh, so of the $4.4 billion in the, transportation program, in the transportation budget appropriated for state and local road and bridge programs, about 23, excuse me, 2.3 billion is for the state trunk line program. That's the program administered by the Michigan Department of Transportation. That's the program that, that constructs and reconstructs and maintains the state trunk line system. And most of you know, but, but the state trunk line system, that represents the interstate highway systems, all the I numbered highway systems, the US numbered highway systems, and the M numbered highway systems. So from the big uh, expressway, say in South, 
East Michigan, I-94, I-696, I-75, to some of the local um, surface trunk lines. Like here in Lansing, Saginaw, Oakland, uh, Cedar and Larch are uh, trunk line business routes in Oakland County, Telegraph Road. Um, that whole system is funded from in support or supported by the state trunk line, these appropriations. And the 2.1 billion is effectively either distributed or made available to local units of government. Again, your county road commissions get a distribution from the Michigan Transportation Fund. It's a formula distribution. I kind of joke that every month they run out to the mailbox and get a check. I know that it's automatically distributed, but you have a mental picture that every month they get a distribution from the Michigan Transportation Fund. They also have access to federal funds on a local federal aid system or a federal aid assistance program. So again, um, part of the distribution to the state trunk line system, part to local systems, and that distribution is governed by Public Act 51 of 1951. It's not a decision made every year by appropriators. Um, so why do we have the, this distribution? It's because we've got different jurisdictions. Um, the state trunk line system represents about 8% of the, the, the linear mileage in the state of Michigan. County roads represent about 74%. City streets about 16, almost eight, or 17, almost 18%. And yet the trunk line system is the biggest high level system. It represents almost 53% of the average daily traffic. So again, if you look at average daily traffic counts in the state of Michigan, um, you know, again, look at I-94, I-75, 696, I-96, um, I-69, all of the traffic going from Canada um, to Chicago and, and beyond in the United States. That's the system, that, that's the high level trunk line system. So we're gonna skip from roads and bridges. Oh, I'm sorry, there's the slide I forgot to show you. Uh, oh wait, this is bridges by uh, jurisdiction. So this is the same, um, effectively the same description is uh, on the highway side. So Michi the, the trunk line system, it only has 40% of the bridges in the state by count, but it's got 73% of the deck area and of the average daily traffic going across bridges, that's 82%. And again, you look at these gigantic bridges on the interstate system, especially in Southeast, Southeast Michigan, and you get a sense of the size of that system. Um, so now we're gonna talk about public transportation programs. Uh, it represents about 9% of this budget. Um, the biggest share of this budget area is distributed or made available to your local public transit system. Um, there are, I think, 81 transit agencies in the state of Michigan from the big metropolitan agencies like, like DDOT in Detroit, SMART uh, in the Oakland, Wayne, Macomb County area, uh, Ann Arbor, CATA here in Lansing, plus a lot of the many counties, I think all counties have access to um, many cases smaller systems, in some cases demand response systems. So that's, um, so $451.4 million of this budget is appropriated primarily in support of those programs. Um, and one thing about the 81 local transit systems, they are all locally owned. The state of Michigan does not own transit systems. The budget provides support for your local system. Um, it supports about, I mean, very roughly about 30% of the operating budgets of your transit systems. So if there's discussions about efficiencies in transit systems or how you want those systems to operate, it's primarily a local decision from your local transit board. Because again, the state of Michigan only provides a, a relatively small share of the operating budget and some capital assistance for the purchase of buses and equipment and facilities. Um, 
The budget also provides support for Amtrak service in, in the state of Michigan, and that's contract service. The state of Michigan contracts with Amtrak to provide rail passenger service. So we've talked about roads and bridges, public transportation. The last main area, aeronautics, and, and it's a fairly small part, uh, 114 million in the current year, and that provides capital assistance to local airports. Again, the state of Michigan, um, it own, it, MDOT owns four very small airports that it, it kind of picked up um, to prevent them from closing effectively. So I think they have five fairly small airports, but all the other airports in the state of Michigan are locally owned in some sense, either by your county, by an airport authority, and the state of Michigan provides no operating assistance at all. But in this budget, we do reflect the Federal Airport Improvement Program, which is a program of capital assistance to your airport. So there's federal funds and the, the, the non-federal match is provided by the state of Michigan reflected in this program. I've got a slide that talks about some of the one-time projects that are in the current year budget. Um, and then here's one little slide of, of interest. Um, so I don't, some people think that state government's too big, the budget's too big, we should shrink the, the budget, shrink government. But this budget, like many budgets, has the character of providing funds to your local unit of government. So in this case, um, lo local programs, either funds that are simply distributed to your local unit of government, like the MTF distribution to your county road commission, or are made available, like funds made available to your airports or transit systems. That represents, uh, this is a small print, 52% of this budget. Um, over half the budget is made available or distributed to local units of government, and less than half is under the authority of the Michigan Department of Transportation. So now we're gonna kind of dig a little bit deeper into the issues associated with transportation. And the, one of the big funding issues centers around the Michigan Transportation Fund, the MTF. The MTF is the primary collection and distribution fund for motor fuel taxes and vehicle registration taxes. And recently, in the last couple of years, that income tax earmark. But traditionally, it's been the receiving collect or the collecting distribution fund for constitutionally dedicated revenue. So if you talk to your road commission on cities and villages or the director of the Michigan Department of Transportation and talk about the challenges of the MTF, the biggest challenge was that MTF revenue peaked in 2004. So if we're gonna look at the, the chart in just a minute, but it peaked in 2004 and MTF revenue in 2013 was almost identical to what it was in the year 2000. We're gonna show that in the little chart here. So if you can see, if you're the director of your local road commission, well, one, one joke I kind of make, so in the year, in the year 1999, suppose you get appointed director of your road commission or director of the Michigan Department of Transportation. So that's a big professional achievement. That's the good news. The bad news is that you'll be burdened with totally flat revenue for 13, 14, 15 years. So your costs have gone up in that 15 year period. Uh, labor costs, health costs, um, during this period, you were required to pre-fund OPEB, um, which you didn't used to do. You've got additional costs. You've got totally flat revenue. So in some ways, this chart tells you a lot about the cause of the road funding crisis, this period of totally flat revenue. Um, the next chart shows the different fund sources. Um, oops. I'm, I'm, paper shuffling here. Um, and you can see um, the top two lines show the, the gasoline share of the motor fuel tax 
and vehicle registration share of the motor fuel tax. And again, they're, they're pretty much equal. Registrations uh, were actually over or um, higher than fuel taxes. And you can see they begin to, to spike up the last couple of years with the passage of the, um, of, of the road funding package in 2015. So on the one slide, this slide shows like the creation or the, the, the source of the road funding problem, this flat revenue. And then here's a description of the results of that flat revenue, at least with respect to the trunk line system, the, Michi the Michigan Department of Transportation system. So in 1997, the State Transportation Commission established pavement performance goals. Um, they're kind of shorthand. We talk about 90% good. They're more complicated than that, but we'll just talk about 90% good. And uh, MDOT met those goals in 2007. And I'll show that in the next slide. The, here's the slide. Let's show it now. The, do I have a pointer? I don't know. So if you look at this uh, slide, um, you can see that they hit that 90% pavement goal. And um, in 2007, they sustained it a couple years, and then it has begun to fall off. And this chart represents actual measured pavement through 2017. Um, I probably need to update this presentation. We'll get better data going forward. So that's actual measured pavement where MDOT has folks go up uh, out on the highways. Um, every, every segment of the trunk line system is evaluated at least once every two years. So they, they do a complete physical evaluation of the trunk line system, techs and engineers, um, input this, this data into a, a, um, a measurement system. So this is actual pavement measurement. They also project into the future. And this is their um, estimate, again, January 2020, of the condition of the state trunk line system um, from 20, actually it begins 2015, going forward to 2028. So, this is this includes the additional revenue from the road funding package. Um, I mean, if you talk, I mean, again, I'm not, I don't represent MDOT, but if you talk to their engineers, they say as grim as that is, it would have been much worse without the road funding package. So in some sense, they would argue that the road funding package uh, simply delayed or um, uh, reduced the rate of decline. And your county road association will probably tell you something similar. They've um, reduced the rate of decline, but they would argue there's not enough revenue to reverse that downward slope. I'm gonna go back to the pre previous slide um, to talk about one thing. When you look at 2007, where MDOT hit that pavement performance goal and they sustained it a couple of years, you gotta keep a couple things in mind one, one of the ways they were able to sustain it is with that additional federal money in 2009, the federal stimulus program, which provided, I think, $900 million to the state of Michigan, divided in part between MDOT and local systems. But that is effectively one-time money. So part of that um, hitting that, that pavement performance goal is from one-time money. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that over that period, the Michigan Department of Transportation borrowed um, billions of dollars. Well, I, I, gotta, I gotta double check on the figure. Um, they borrowed and bonded to, to bring money forward for that, um, to hit that pavement performance goal. So that goal, they didn't hit that just with 2000, revenue or 2004 revenue or 2007 revenue, they pulled revenue forward from the future. And I'll double check on the amount um, in just a minute. And, um, so actually that kind of is, is close to the windup of my formal 
presentation. Um, so this kind of represents, or this totally represents the challenge to legislators, to appropriators. Um, let me just double check. Yes, yeah, so this, again, this slide represents the condition of just, like the pavement condition on the state trunk line system. They have additional leads on, on the bridge system, which they evaluate separately. And there are other uh, transportation challenges, mobility, safety, uh, economic development, things like that. And again, your county road commission and your cities and villages have similar challenges. They're a little harder to quantify because you've got 600, what do you have, 616 cities and villages? Uh, 83 county road commissions. So they've got, each one of those has a slightly different experience. It's easier to quantify the trunk line system and it is the big high level system. But uh, to wrap up, um, this is the challenge facing legislators, appropriators, and your members. So I think I've talked about 35 minutes. I don't know if you've got questions or, I'm gonna grab a water. I can't. Um, oh, thank am you, I back Bill. on screen? Uh, I can't see myself here. Yeah, thank you, Bill. <laughs> uh, we do have quite a few questions. So um, the first one I'm going to ask is from Shelley Taub down in Oakland County. Uh, can you speak to the issues of how registration fees are faring under COVID-19 and, and the trends on car sales? Uh, thank you for my former chairman, subcommittee chairman, Representative Taub. I can't see you, but I, um, nice to hear from you. Um, well, this is one thing that's, again, still in flux. Uh, so again, when we talked about this budget, it's developed, the current year budget was developed effectively by um, maybe back in August of 20. 2019. So the Michigan Department of Treasury and the Secretary of State and MDOT develop revenue estimates for a year that doesn't begin until October 2020, like a month from now. So they're looking in a crystal ball. The, the um, estimating fuel tax revenue, registration tax revenue, and obviously in March uh, March 13th, uh, Friday the 13th, is pretty much when everything changed. Uh, March the 13th was the last time I saw in person my coworkers. We stayed all stayed home for a, a good month, two months. So it's a little early to tell. We've got some preliminary figures, but clearly, it clearly the current year revenue. Well, let me back up. The actual collected revenue by the Michigan Department of Treasury and Transportation Secretary of State is going to be less than the revenue on which this budget was based. So uh, it's a little early to tell. It's going to be less. I, I don't know at this point how much less. Okay. Uh, switching gears onto aviation, Joe Bonovitz up in Gogeba County. Uh, is money for essential air service airports included in the Michigan budget or is that all federal money? That is all federal money, although there there has been a small, um, a very small state appropriation. It's typically two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for essential air service, and I think it does help some of the smaller airports. But I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't know a lot about that program because it's so very small. Um, so most, almost all of the uh, aeronautics funding in the budget is for the Federal Airport Improvement Program. Okay, um, question from Kathy Pullen in Alger County, I believe. Um, how long does this earmarked funding last? And I think that's in reference to the last uh, road package. Yes, so that's one of the challenges. Um, so the road funding package, actually let me, um, yeah, so here's the slide that talks about the road funding package. I didn't talk about it a lot in my formal presentation, but it was passed in November 
2015. The initial increases in registration taxes and motor fuel taxes didn't happen for over a year. They didn't take effect until January 2017. So there was a whole year. I mean, this is one of the, the challenges of that package. It was passed and enacted, and there were events highlighting the passage. And then that next spring during the budget discussions, members asked, well, when, when will we see the improvement in pavement condition? And the director said, like, you won't. There's a whole year that's going to go by before we get any additional money. Um, so that went into effect in January 2017. That happened all at once, but a year after passage. And then there was an incremental um, addition of this earmarked income tax money. Uh, first beginning in 2019, and then $468 million in the current year, and then an anticipated $600 million in 2021, and each year going forward. And that's one of the things that the governor wanted to eliminate in her Fixing Michigan Roads package. She wanted to increase the constitutionally restricted revenue going to transportation, fuel taxes, registration taxes, and pull out that earmarked income tax money um, that effectively would have otherwise gone to the general fund. So in some sense, not to, again, not to speak for her, trying to fix two problems at once, fixing the transportation funding problem and fixing general fund budget problems. Um, so that's a long answer, but unless the Income Tax Act is changed and amended, that 600 million is gonna go on forever. Okay, thanks, Bill. Next question uh, from Jim Marino up in Isabella County. Um, have plans been made at the state level to account for the shift to more electric vehicles being used? Um, to some extent, uh, maybe incrementally. So as part of the road funding package, there was a surcharge added to certain electric vehicles that meet some kind of criteria for electric vehicles. And I don't think I ever fully understood what that criteria was. Um, but, but yes, and I don't remember the amount of the surcharge. So there was an attempt to, to uh, charge those electric vehicles an additional registration surcharge. But, you do, but that does highlight the problem with using fuel tax as the primary source or one of the primary sources of transportation revenue. Because we do have a shift to alternative fuel vehicles. Um, younger people, even before COVID, younger people were applying for driver's licenses, much less than people of my generation. People were driving less. So that's one of the main reasons MTF revenue is flat. Even if you increase the tax rate, the base is going to continue to fall off. The base being number of gallons consumed. And that's one of the reasons, one of the pushes for different funding mechanisms. Um, I know that, uh, I mean, there's, there's discussion about tolling. Um, there are different tolling options, virtual tolling. Again, if you travel to Chicago and you, you take the tri-state outside of Chicago, you do not stop at a toll booth, or you can, or you can breeze by the toll booth and they'll send you a toll ticket, uh, a charge. So there are different ways to do tolling. There's um, um, traffic management tools and tolling where you can charge higher tolls during the rush hour. Um, higher, you can adjust the tolls as traffic builds. Um, there's a whole, um, lots of research on tolling, but it seems likely eventually that's the way I think most states are gonna end up going with some alternative method. Because as I say, the fuel tax base is likely gonna to continue to erode in the, in the future. Uh, yeah, just kind of following up on that, Bill, uh, wasn't Oregon looking at some type of pilot program to uh, um, try to raise the revenue by miles driven as opposed to fuel consumed? 
Yeah, exactly. I, I believe it is Oregon. They've got a, a system where I think, and I, but I think it's elective where some drivers can pay by miles driven. Um, so I don't think that's a fully formed rolled out system. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think there, there are different options for tolling, yes. Okay, uh, next question uh, back from Kathy Pullen again. Uh, regarding the local match from uh, cities, villages, townships, through millages, other sources, uh, question, is any track kept of how important they are to transportation funding? So how big a piece of the pie are we seeing in those local dollars? You know, occasionally I would try to look at that. I've got, a, I've got that figure someplace and I hate to give it, um, I'll try to put it on the agency website or update that. The f I'm going to throw out, I think, I think it's roughly 400 million, but when you think about all of those different sources, many townships have township millages, and they have, like you have, the county road commissions have match programs. Um, some count townships simply provide township general fund revenue to the county road commission. That's what my township does. Um, Oakland County provides county general fund dollars to the road commission for a match program. Um, and then you've got transit millages. Um, here in, in Lansing, Canada has a transit millage. Um, for years and years, one of the biggest sources of local contribution to, to local transit programs was from the city of Detroit. At one time, they were contributing $90 million of city general fund dollars for their, for the DDOT transit program. I think that's fallen quite a bit in the last few years, but those are examples of locally raised funds that stay with your local unit of government. And I'll try to nail down exactly how much that is. I, I've periodically looked at that, but the number didn't stick in my head very well. Sure, okay, thanks. Uh, next question, Gail Patterson Gladney. Uh, how can more federal money be given in another federal stimulus program? How can it be? Well, so this is something we have received um, additional federal funds through the CARES Act, which is again the, the COVID, one of the COVID stimulus acts. Some money went to your local transit systems. Uh, some additional money went to for airport improvement programs. Um, and so that's in some sense, that's why the, this um, presentation is a little out of date. I've got to update it to represent these federal programs. So if, if we want additional federal aid to support transportation programs, that's something your people in Congress can do. It can be initiated from the executive branch for, from whoever is president. Um, they can be proposed and enacted by Congress with the president's signature. That's how the last stimulus package was enacted. The um, cooperation and coordination between the president and the executive branch and Congress could get another stimulus package passed. Yeah, just to follow up on that, um, then of course I uh, apologize to Gail if I'm mangling the intent of her <laughs> question. Um, is this a situation if, for example, if DC wants to send more infrastructure money down, at least in the case of Michigan, would it be a situation where uh, the feds uh, issue the money to the state and then it's handed out through existing formulas? I think that's where she's kind of going is, yes. you know, how would that money get to where that's, it needs to be? That's exactly how the 2008 stimulus package happened. So on the highway side, it was roughly 900 million, and it was sub-allocated to local units and to the trunk line system in a very similar manner to the current distribution system of, of federal aid. Um, so yeah, again, some to the trunk line system, some to your county road commissions. Uh, it went through the same federally mandated planning process, and even with the the transit money in the CARES Act, it was distributed through the existing federal transit program uh, categoricals, as it were. Um, so yes, I, I assume that any additional federal money would probably follow the existing federal programs because they're all set up. There's a planning process. Um, 
MDOT administers those programs in cooperation with locals and in the urban areas with metropolitan planning organizations. So that whole framework is, is already set up. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question from Shelley Taub down in Oakland County. And I think you touched on this a little bit. Uh, Shelley's question, are we still subsidizing trains and buses? Um, well, subsidizing in the sense that um, the operating revenue of those systems is not sufficient to cover all of the, the operating expenses. So fare box, one of the measures is fare box recovery in your transit system. Um, and that varies depending very much on the nature of the system. So in big urban systems, we again, before COVID, where you had lots of riders, um, the buses operated close to capacity, um, you had pretty good fare box recovery. Um, in some cases, say 20, 25%. The balance, the amount that was not covered by fare box, by, by people paying at the, at the fare box, is covered in part by local contributions, uh, in part by, um, by the state operating assistance. And again, the state share of that operating assistance is roughly about 30%. Um, so the balance is covered by fare box and local contributions, and in some cases by federal aid. And that's also the case with uh, the Amtrak program. We've got three routes in Michigan, one that originates in Pontiac, Detroit, Chicago, one that originates in Port Huron through Flint, Lansing, Chicago, and then the one that originates in Grand Rapids down to Chicago. And the state of Michigan contracts with Amtrak, pays Amtrak to operate that service. Uh, again, before COVID, the operating subsidy cost had been going down because revenue had been going up. There was in increased ridership. Um, again, that's another challenge of COVID. I'm sure ridership has fallen off quite a bit. So yeah, and that's a long answer. But yes, the state of Michigan still provides assistance for transit systems, local transit systems, and uh, rail passenger service. Okay, great. Um, question from Bob Showers out of Clinton County. Do you know how many county road millages have been enacted? Ooh, no. At one time, I know at one time, I think there were 13 counties, not that long ago, um, that had countywide millages. Some of them were dedicated for specific, I think in Upper Michigan, maybe for snow, snow removal. I think there are more now in the last couple of years. And again, many townships have township millages. So the last time I looked, it was 13 counties, but that may have gone up. I'll see if I can double check on that. Okay, and okay, here's gonna be our last question for Bill. Um, doesn't, in, this is Jim Marino again in Isabella County, doesn't increased funding on road construction not only improve the roads, but stimulate the economy through jobs and services? So I guess, you know, economic impact of spending on infrastructure. I don't want to get too far out of my field of expertise because I'm not an economist and our agency economist has a slightly different take on this than I do. So I tend to agree with you. So it puts people to work. The road construction industry is a labor intensive industry. There are efficiencies, but it's mostly done by laborers, skilled tradesmen, whatnot. It can't be offshored to uh, other folks. Um, our economist at Fiscal is kind of more narrowly focused. He, he thinks all spending is the same as any other spending, but I disagree with him. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I hope to see you in person next year. Wait, Derek, you're too close. I got to put my mask on. <laughs> Get away from me. Sorry about that, Bill. Dang. Thank you. Thank you again, Bill Hamilton of the House Fiscal Agency for the briefing today. Um, our next segment is going to be the President's Gathering featuring keynoter Tom Izzo of the Michigan State University Spartans.